General Mills is currently trading at about $66 per share and over the past 5 days the company is down by 4.18% and over the past 6 months the company is down by 16.66%. Now today I want to figure out whether General Mills is a good buy at its current trading price of $65.87 per share. Now as we all know General Mills is a manufacturer and marketer of branded consumer foods. And as in this time people have less money, they tend to spend less on brand and consumer foods and that is one of the reasons why the stock price of GIS is slowly falling. Now if we jump over to overview, we can see that Morningstar gives GIS a fair value estimate of 78 USD. Now if we jump to the dividend step, we can see that GIS has actually not been raising dividends by that much over the past 5 years. They have raised them by only about 10 cents since 2018, which is about a 3% raise every single year. Now if we have a look at the payout ratio, the current payout ratio is sitting below 50% which is great. Now we also want to have a look at the analysts forecast. We want to see what the analysts say about GIS over the next few years. So we will switch to annual and we can see that the earnings per share is supposed to rise up till the year 2028 by about 20% as of now. The net income before tax is also expected to rise and if we scroll all the way down we can see that the revenue is expected to rise as well. Now to figure out whether GIS is a good buy at its current trading price, we'll jump over to my fully automatic stock valuation spreadsheets, which by the way you can access at my Patreon in the link in the description. Now we'll plug in the ticker GIS and the metrics show up automatically. Now the first thing we can see is the dividends of GIS. We can see that the dividend yield is sitting at 3.58%, which is a very decent dividend yield. The trading payout ratio is sitting at 53.19%, which is a little higher than I generally like to see. I generally like to see trading payout ratio below 50%, but 53% isn't that bad. The institutional ownership is sitting at almost 80%, and the beta of the company is sitting at 0.24, which is a very, very low beta. And we can also see that if we plug in 3000 days, which is about 5 to 6 years, we can see that the company's stock price has been growing fairly steadily over this time period. Now, jumping to the nine pillar analysis, we will evaluate the nine most important metrics. Once should consider when purchasing a company. Now the first metric we want to have a look at is the P ratio of the past 5 years and we want this to be sitting below 22.5 and what this basically tells you is that the company isn't overpaying for their revenue. GIS's 5 year P ratio is currently sitting at 16.76 which is a very decent P ratio. We also want the 5 year profit margin to be sitting above 10% as we can see that is indeed the case with GIS and we want there to be net income and revenue growth over the past five years which basically shows you that the company is developing and growing. Now we also want there to be a decrease in shares outstanding as we can see that is not the case with GIS. Now the reason why we want there to be a decrease in shares outstanding is that when there are less shares in the overall market the value of the shares you own grows and therefore it grows your investment. Now down here we can see that GIS has indeed been increasing their free cash flow over the past 5 years by about 1.62% a year and their price to free cash flow over the past 5 years is sitting at 14.96. This is very similar to the first metric we covered and there is also consecutive dividend growth sitting at about 3.4% year over year. Now the most important metric in my opinion is the long term liabilities over the 5 year free cash flow negative dividends to be sitting below 3 and this basically tells us that the company has enough revenue to pay off for all their long term liabilities while paying out their current dividend and as we can see GIS is currently sitting at about 2 which means that they can pay off most of their long term liabilities in about 10 years while paying out their current dividend. Now we can move to our first valuation model which is the Graham's formula revised. Now to value the company using Benjamin Graham's formula revised, we will take all these metrics and plug them into the formula. We will then divide by the current yield on A corporation bonds and get an intrinsic value of $53.86, about 22% lower than the current trading price of the company. 
Now one of the possible reasons for this low intrinsic value is the current yield on AA Corporation bonds which is currently sitting at 4.95 which is quite higher than the short term average which is generally sitting at about 3.5 and if we plug that in we can see that the intrinsic value jumps up to $76.18 which is 14% higher than the current trading price of the company. Now jumping to the discounted cash flow model we'll plug in the free cash flow over the past few years over the past 8 or 10 years and calculate the average growth rate to be sitting at 3.29%. Now as I like to be conservative I will plug in the growth rate of 3% and using that we'll calculate the future free cash flow over the next few years. Now using the discount rate at 8% we'll calculate the present value of that future free cash flow. We then sum up all that present value of the future free cash flow, add any cash and cash equivalent, subtract total debt which in this case is sitting quite high and we get the equity value which we divide by the shares outstanding and get an intrinsic value of $54.53. Again a bit lower than the current trading price by about $10. Now we can move to the multiples valuation where we will compare GIS to companies which operate in the same sector, in this case KHC, KDP and HSY. We take these companies current stock prices divide by their earnings per share and get their PE ratios which we average out and then multiply by the earnings per share of GIS to get an intrinsic value of $97.04 which suggests that GIS might indeed be undervalued compared to companies which operate in the same sector. Now we can move to the final valuation, the dividend discount model. And here we plug in the dividend payout of the past 5 years and calculate the average growth rate to be sitting at 3.08%. Now I project a future growth rate of 3% and using that we calculate the next year's dividend and using the WAC we get an intrinsic value of $65.98, only a little bit higher than the current trading price of the company. Now we can jump to our ultimate valuation where we average out the four valuations we did prior and get an intrinsic value of $73.43 which is only a bit higher than the current trading price by about 11.5%. Now if we plug in a margin of safety of say 10% we get an acceptable buy price at $66.50. And if we plug in a margin of safety of 15%, which is the average margin of safety I like to go with, we get an acceptable buy price at $62.42. Now personally I am already invested into General Mills but I keep investing as the share price falls. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful and let me know down in the comments which company you would like me to evaluate next.